93.7 FM. It's one o'clock and you welcome to the Joy Business Report. Well, coming up, Bank of Ghana targets full recovery from current lost position in the next five years and national petroleum authority said to deepen stakeholder consultation before the introduction of the cylinder recirculation model takes off from next month My name is George Riafe. Let's now settle for the details. The Bank of Ghana has indicated that it is hoping to recover strongly from its current loss position over the next five years. Director of Research at the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Philip Abrodou, to disclose this on PM Express Business Edition. He added that they are looking at recapitalizing with government support or even looking on their own profits. The economic situation always evolves. So within the context of a stable, sound macroeconomic environment and putting in place these measures that I outlined to you, the, the four measures including uh, a potential recapitalization of the Bank of Ghana, we should be getting out of this uh, very quickly. We had that discussion during the IMF talks on the need for a recapitalization of the Bank of Ghana, mm. uh, and, and, and those discussions are already underway. Mm. The problem is that we need to see through implementation of the current IMF program, which runs for a period of three years, by which time government would have created enough space to be able to use some of those space to uh, sort of re, re consider recapitalizing the Bank of Ghana. Mm-hmm. So you've gotten to that level of that decision where the bank has to be recapitalized, and that is discussion okay. started mm-hmm. way way back mm-hmm. before uh, we published this result. Yes, your biggest shareholder uh, yeah. taking that decision that indeed we have to do this. Talks are still going on. Uh, that decision hasn't been taken. Talks are still going on. Mm-hmm. There is recognition across board that some recapitalization is needed. If out of the loss of 60.8, 53.1 is as a result of the DDEP, if that had not happened, we wouldn't be reporting of a loss of 60. If that had not happened, take that 53 out, it's a loss of 7 billion. If you look at the other factors as well, we also had exchange rate variations, Mm -hmm. also contributing some mm, 5 billion. George, the macroeconomy and the DDEP in which the economy operated in 2022 was the reason. It tells us one thing. We need to pursue policies to always uh, ensure stable macroeconomic conditions because that is vital. Director of Research at the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Philip Abrodotu. Financial economist Professor Goffrey Buckin has stressed the need for debt incurred by government from the central bank to be captured under its fiscal liabilities. According to the professor, such accounting principles will make government acknowledge the true picture of the country's total debt stock. Now, government had a lean way, and the IMF agreed to that. The, the 2016 IMF supported program did not comprehensively capture the banking vulnerabilities and therefore government took advantage of that to explain that this was needful and therefore the cost incurred from that level should not be included in the mainline fiscal deficit which would have meant that we will be above the threshold and probably will not qualify to to exit the program successfully or get the next tranche so we reported the deficit 
with and without. If you put all of them together inclusively, we were, we were doing deficit in excess of 7% from 2018. So even when the Fiscal Responsibility Act stipulated 5% of GDP, we were doing far more than that. And that is economist Professor Gottfried Buckpin. The National Petroleum Authority says it is deepening stakeholder consultation before the introduction of the cylinder recirculation model it takes off from next month. This will prevent any concerns that people have with the program. According to Deputy Chief Executive of the National Petroleum Authority, Perry Okuja, to his outfit, has also done a door-to-door -door engagement with these LPG marketers for more dialogue to aid all these concerns that they have about it. He was addressed in a news conference on the policy. A letter to LPGMs. Because we are inching closer to implementation dates, we have to prepare the industry. And therefore, a lot of correspondence is happening. We're writing letters, we're having meetings and agreeing on a rollout plan. We are, we are trying to accommodate everybody's consent so that we can roll out. So like was described to you, we're going to run both policies side by side. So there's still business for bulk road vehicles and there's new business for cylinder transportation. The industry works in such a way And that is uh, Perry Kujato. He is the Deputy Chief Executive of the National Petroleum Authority. Getting a good place to sell your wares in the market is a big deal for a lot of traders in the country. It is for this reason why traders in the Kumasi Central Market are worried about delays in completing the phase two of the Kititia redevelopment project. Today on the Business Journal, Lab FM Mona Lisa Frimpon speak to some traders in that area want government to fast track that project. Plenty questions, no answer. How come we sell contracts? Biggie lifestyle. The second phase of the KDTR redevelopment project halted in December last year. The construction firm Contractar laid off over 2,000 workers and evacuated most of their equipment from the site. Months ago, a section of the affected central market traders threatened to remove barricades at the site to start business if the government failed to continue the project. The traders are up again, prevailing on the government to ensure the contractors return to site. Deputy Chairman of the United Petty Traders Association, Emmanuel Amwa, says the traders risk their lives plying their trade on pavements. <laughs> He said, we are all trading on pavements. They should finish the construction of this project before December this year. Some traders say the construction of the Crow Room and Central Market projects could have eased congestion in the Central Business District. The roof is at Santa Regil. Let me say, me, eh, Fenice, I didn't cry, Fenice, eh, organizer. They have halted the construction of the markets. I am an organizer of one of the NPP wings. We organize people to vote for the NPP. If they do not finish this project, we will vote against them in the upcoming elections. We will even go to the extent of pulling down the edifice. <laughs> We are pleading with government. We want to leave the streets and sell in stores. The traders made the appeal at a star Ghana funded program with the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly. The program is aimed at helping traders to develop their businesses through proper records keeping. Project coordinator Edward Techi says poor records keeping affects traders in accessing loans for business expansion. He also appealed to the government to bring back contractors to site to continue the central market project. <laughs> And I said, I'm going to keep records. 
Say, see, answer who pays Capra or Bank or Eddie Adu Jana. If it was our way, you he said. The traders fail to keep records, but that is what the bank requires before giving out any loan. For Joy Business, Mona Lisa Frimpon reporting. And indeed, in Kuma, where you day together with the founders of Ghana as we celebrate Founders Day, and this is the Joy Business Report at one, the Founders Day edition. My name is George Jaffe. Have a great holiday. And this news was brought to you by Echo Bank. Echo Bank, the Pan-African Bank.